Welcome back to Prospect Spotlight. Tonight we're shining the light on a man known as Darko Stojic. He's an absolute fucking savage from Russia. Okay, that's all you need to know. He's from Serbia. Dangerous guy. Dangerous guy at 205 for anyone, let alone Devin fucking Clark, who he's fighting next. I don't see... I see him as the next guy to come up in light heavyweight. And especially at light heavyweight, we all know, if you win two fights in a row... You're next for John Jones, because the division is the worst in the fucking UFC, other than flyweight. And let's be real, every women's division as well. Um, but as far as male divisions go, light heavyweight's the emptiest division other than flyweight. In my opinion. It might even be more empty than flyweight, but right now we've got contenders on the rise. And Darko Stodgic is adding his name to that list. And I'm very excited. 13 wins, 1 loss, 8 KOs, 4 decisions, and 1 submission. Okay, that's variation right there, boys. That's not a guy who's only knocked out guys in the first round or only submitted guys. And we don't know what happens if that doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? We know he can go to the decision. We know he can knock you out in the first round. And hey, if, if, the, if the planets align, he might even find a submission. He has lost by TKO before, which does worry me. But upon looking into the TKO loss, it says NA on time. So, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't done much research into it, but NA on time means that it's happened in between rounds. And I'm assuming that the doctor's stopped it for a cut in the corner. Like, while he's on the, while he's on the stall or something, he's, like, injured himself. Some kind of injury, and the doctor's called it their TKO finish. You know what I'm saying? You can't answer the bell for the next round. Much like Brian Ortega. You know, maybe his eye got swollen up, and he can't continue to the next round, so that's why they called it a TKO. Now... Listen up, boys. This guy's got fucking power, okay, in his fucking hands. And he doesn't just wing bombs in overhands. If you're going to bet on someone, I'd bet on him. Because Devin Clark isn't the biggest of light heavyweights, first of all. He isn't the most powerful. He beats average opponents at best. Every time he's faced a challenge, he's lost. He's coming off a loss to a guy also on the card fighting Jimmy Manoa in Rakic. Who knocked him out in the first or second round, I believe. I don't see anything in Devin Clark's game that's going to prove a problem for Darko Stodgic. I mean, watching some of his fights, and he doesn't just wing overhands. I'll get back to this. He's got huge power, but he's not got power like... He doesn't just swing like crazy, okay? He's setting it up, so it's a fake jab, then the straight right comes through. It's not just a winging shot that lands, because anyone can knock someone out by doing that. Real power is in precision, uh, precision in my opinion. Anyone can knock someone out if they're swinging massive haymakers and land on the chin. That's just always going to happen. But when you're knocking guys out with straight right hands, that's when I notice power at its best. Okay, because anyone can swing wild and connect and win. You know what I'm saying? But this guy, he's faking a jab, then blasting straight right, right down the middle, knocking guys out cold. And I like this guy's style. I really do. I think he's got a lot to provide for the light heavyweight division. He's a big guy. I don't know what win streak he's on, but he hasn't lost since his fifth fight. So he's on a huge fucking win streak. And he's beaten decent guys as well. And guys that he's gone to decision with, they're not the best. You know what I'm saying? But they're good guys. Yeah, they've got a lot of fights and 16 losses. But they've got like 40 wins. You know, so experienced guys that know what it takes to go to a decision. This guy's beaten them in decisions. Okay, and I'm, I can't remember what name I was looking at. But I think it was Dion Staring. He has like 40 wins, 16 losses, knows what a decision is. And Darko Stojic shows that he doesn't just gas out after the first round. He can find knockouts in the second. He can go the distance and still win. And from what I saw in his UFC debut against Jeremy Kimball, he got the TKO in the first round with elbows and punches by ground and pound. And I saw savagery. Okay, I saw Jeremy Kimball shoot for actually a very nice takedown. It was a very nice takedown. He almost had his hands connected behind the waist of uh, Stojic. But he just completely D'd up on it and flipped him round to the ground. I mean, it reminded me of Robbie Lawler D'ing up on takedowns against Rory McDonald. That was some of the best takedown defense I've ever seen. Because I don't care about takedown defense if, like, you know, Israel Adesanya defends Kelvin Gastelum's takedowns. They weren't the best. He was leaning against the cage. Nothing. But when you shoot with a really fucking good double leg. You know what I'm saying? Like Whitakers versus Romero's. When you shoot for a really fucking good double leg. And it's there. And any other guy is going down to that. And the guy just fucking D's up and shakes you off like it's nothing. Like Robbie Lawler did to Roy McDonald. Darko Stojic 
is an absolute savage. And I think he's got the full game. I think the only way Devin Clark's going to win is by trying to get this fight to the ground. Because he doesn't have the most knockout power in the UFC. He's also been knocked out quite a few times. I believe it was two or three. It was two times. He's been submitted once as well. I just don't see a way for him to win. I really don't. I think this is a close fight. Darto Stodges is not going to be a huge favourite. But he's got traction behind him. And I wanted to shine a spotlight on him. Because there's a lot of guys that go under the radar on these fight nights. Where you just kind of look at the first three fighters and think, oh, the rest of the card's shit. You know what I'm saying? So you're looking at Manawa, you're looking at Latifi versus Ozdemir, you're looking at Gustafsson versus Smith, and then you're like, oh, the rest of the fight's just contenders. But this guy has a potential to headline events of his own someday, I believe. And I'm riding with him till the end. I think he's going to get a win over Devin Clark. I think he's just going to be too big. I think leg kicks are going to be a big deal here. And here's why. Because Devin Clark's very open to leg kicks. He has very thick, wide thighs. He's got them thickness, boys. He's got them Latino legs, even though he's not Latino, okay? He's got very thick thighs, and they are very hard for him to get up to check kicks in a very quick amount of time. You know what I'm saying? The heavier your legs are, the more heavy set you are on your feet, the much harder it is to check leg kicks. And I think that Darko Stodic should open up with leg kicks, and then maybe try to mix it in and start faking leg kicks into a Superman punch, much like John Jones did against Lyoto Machida. If you remember that fight, John Jones was faking leg kicks and coming through with a Superman punch to finish Leo Machida. Obviously, I don't think Darko Stodges is on John Jones' level yet. But if I think if there's a tactic that he can use, it'd be to start blasting leg kicks early with a good high guard to defend any shots coming back from Devin Clark. Um, watch for the takedowns off of the leg kicks as well. But yeah, the leg kicks are going to be a big reason for setting up the first round knockout that I think he's going to get. And yeah, get him thinking low. And then finish up high. I think Darko Stodges is going to get a win here, boys. I really do. I just... I've been watching this fight. And I think, yeah, this guy's it. This guy's got it right now. Yeah, he could be in a bit better shape. He's ripped. Yes, no less. But he has got a bit of love handles. A little bit of this, a little bit of that everywhere. But, I mean, I'm riding with him right now, boys. I'm on, I'm on the fucking Darko Stodges hype train. I think he's a savage. I think he is. Another Russian on the scene. They were for a while empty in the UFC, but I think that now they're now that I think Khabib has made a movement in Russia that's sort of shown the Russian guys that they have somewhere to go now. Because I think for years Russian guys were doing sambo, they were doing boxing, they were doing all these other sports, they were doing wrestling at the Olympics, and they just didn't have an avenue after that athletic background. But I think that now they have that avenue because it takes one guy. All it takes is one guy from your country that you can relate to to make it into the UFC for you to be like, wait, I can do that as well. And I think that's what Darko Stodges has done here. Even though he's not from Russia, he's from around that area. I hope Serbia is close to Russia. I'm going to look it up right now. Give me a second, guys. <laughs> no way near Russia. Nowhere near Russia. I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about right now. Serbia is nowhere near Russia. It's in the middle of fucking nowhere above Greece. Okay, boys. I'm very tempted to restart the whole fucking video right now. But I'm not going to. Because that's coward's move. Um. Anyway. Yeah, as I was saying about um, the Serbian culture right now. Uh, yeah. Fuck. Anyway. Wow. Oh, that's what it is. Serbia, Siberian. I have really fucked this one up, boys. I've really fucked this up. I've s ignore the Russian part, okay? Just ignore the Russian part. Everything else I said is matter of fact. And it doesn't mean anything that he's not from Russia or anywhere near Russia, okay? Serbia is a, a place above Greece that I thought was Siberia because I'm a fucking moron. Darko Stodges is going to get the first round KO. I think he's going to mix it up to the legs and finish up high with a straight right hand off of a fake jab. That's just the way I see the fight going. I don't see Devin Clark having any sort of answer for it. He's been knocked out before. He's shown that he's quite chinny he can, he, and he can't really take a huge shot. He's going to be outsized here. He's going to be plodding very heavy on his front foot and he's going to be looking for the takedown. 
I think Darko Stodgic is going to be able to stop it, stuff it, and smash David Clark in his fucking face. That's all I've got to say. Serbia isn't Siberia. I just need to start reading things correctly. It's my autism. It is my autism. And it just, it blinds me from reality of words. Okay, I can't, I, I can't even redeem that, boys. And there's no time to re-record, so... Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah. Fuck me. I, that's a, I am disgraced in my behavior right now. I want you guys to know how angry I am. Because I pride myself on my geography. And that is just... That has absolutely pissed me off. And I'm going to still post it and embarrass myself. So yeah. See you later, guys. Like and subscribe. Also, most live streams are going to be starting from 8pm now. And I'm going to be live on Saturday. So, yeah. I wanted to start doing three hours at a time because, I mean, I don't leave the house, so I might as well do three hours, you know? Like and subscribe. Again, for the fourth time. Do it.